Hello again, and welcome to another C++ tutorial for absolute beginners. This is going to be the continuation of my last video on if statements. Uh, we're just going to jump right into the additional parts of if statements. So if you remember from our last video, we've got this if statement right here that allows us to print and see whether we're going into the false or true section of the if statement. So we've got our false or true or true with our parentheses and remember that in an if statement you can use parentheses to denotate order of operations for the compiler so it knows what part of the if statement to evaluate first and if you also remember from the last video if statements you can think of them as continually simplifying themselves so since this part has parentheses around it it would simplify first so it the compiler would look at this part and say true or true one of those is true, so this whole th part becomes true. So then we have false or true, and this is just a simple or, and then that whole thing will become true because this part is true. Now we're going to introduce some numbers into this. So aside from our Boolean variable, we're going to create a few numbers. We're going to create num1, num2, and num3. Now, I don't believe I've covered this in any of, any of my previous videos, but you can create multiple variables of the same type on the same line separated by commas. So here we've created three integer variables because the type specified was integer. We could change this to float and very easily just create three float variables, but we're going to keep it as integer. So now we have three integers, num1, num2, and num3. Now you can do this with as many variables as you want, and you can just set them all to values down here. So now we're going to set num1 to 4, num2 to whatever, I don't know, 3, num3 is 10, let's say. Don't want to forget your semicolons because that will cause a compiler error. So now, let's start with some more operators, except numerically. So let's say 4 equals 3. Now, if you know anything about math and numbers, this will evaluate as false. Perfect. Good. Because 4 clearly does not equal 3, this evaluates as false, and we, and we uh, go to false. So again, our if, st simpl if statement continually simplifies. Even though this is 1, this turns to false, and it's just like I said before, where you can have a if statement that's constantly false or true. Essentially, every time an if statement is run, that's happening. It's simplifying the entire if statement to either false or true, no matter how many expressions are in there. Okay, so if we want, needed to make this true, let's say we had variables. Let's say num1 and num2, and they were set to th 4 and 3 respectively, so Let's try that again, and it's exactly the same thing because it's simplifying again. That's changing to 4. That's changing to 3. Then the whole thing is evaluating as false. So if we change that back. Let's say I wanted to make it evaluate as true. Let's say I wanted to make sure num1 did not equal num2. And if that was the case, I wanted it to evaluate as true. So if I put an exclamation point in the place of that first equal sign, that becomes the not equal to operator. So if we run that, it's true. Now if we set, now let's say we change num2 to 4. So essentially what we're saying is whatever num1 is, if it does not equal 4, true. In this case, it does equal 4, so we're going to get false. But if num2, if we change this value to 6, or anything other than 4, 
it would be true. So you can kind of just kind of set up parameters for variables by using that, but by evaluating a variable against a constant. You can say num1 can't be this, but it can be this. So let, let's do that right here. Let's say num1 cannot be 4, and we'll use our and, and num1 is less than 4 or num1 is greater than or equal to 20. So num1 can't be 4 and num1 has to be less than 4 or greater than 20. So we don't really need parentheses around this, but anytime I have an if statement that's more than three uh, or, or two or three or more expressions, I like to put parentheses, parentheses around it just to make it very clear to myself and abundantly clear to the compiler what I want to be done. So if you put parentheses around that, that's true. Because num1 is currently six. So 6 does not equal 4. That part is true. And num1 is less than 4, which it's not. Or num1 is less than or equal to 20, which it is. So let's switch this to a greater than. So num1 does not equal 4 and num1 is less than 4, or num1 is greater than or equal to 20. So anytime we have a greater than or less than sign, if we throw the equal sign after it, that will make it less than or greater than or equal to, which will make it inclusive. So this part, this right here, is not inclusive. So if we change this to 5, let's say, and then change num1 back to 4, and then evaluated it, it's false, because 4 does not equal 5, and 4 is not less than 4. 4 is equal to 4. So we need a number of that's 4.0 or less or 3.999999 or less for this to be true. And num1 is 4 is definitely not greater than or equal to 20. But if we put 20 in there, then it would evaluate as true because the greater than or equal to and less than or equal to are inclusive. Okay, so we, we've got to less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. And we have did our not equal to. So those are pretty much the core, uh, core foundational logical operators in C++. And to be honest, most, most other programming languages use a very similar convention for their logical operators. Now my challenge to you now is to just play around with if statements because you're never going to learn programming by watching these videos. You're going to learn programming by actually stopping and watch, stopping to program yourself and trying things out, making mistakes, then coming back to the videos to find out where your mistakes were and why your mistakes happened. So right now I encourage you before you go on to the next video to just kind of play around with if statements. Play around with less than or equal to. S see if you can predict what the if statement's going to evaluate with really really long complex and convoluted if statements with lots of parentheses, 
lots of different logical operations and stuff like that. See if you can manually simplify it like I've done a few times in this video and get it right. So that is my challenge to you in this video. In the next video we're gonna start covering more variable types. So up until this point we've covered covered int, float, and bool, and briefly in the first video char. Um, we're gonna get, go more in depth into different variable types and the ones we've already covered. So stay tuned for more and thanks for watching.